Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and I hope you've grabbed something to paint yourself as I'm going to be painting this Sylvaneth from Wraithbone all the way to my completed piece. I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> Here she is then, primed in wraith bone, and I'm not exactly certain, sure, what colors I am going to use. I got an array of colors out here for myself, uh, Wildwood, uh, Griffhound Orange, Magma Droth Flame, Garagax Sewer, Cygore Brown, Algae Green, Burnt Moss, Dusk Red, Poppy red, bright red, and flash gets yellow. I'm not gonna worry too much about how she turns out. I'm just going for a, an autumn setting. This is Wildwood. I'm going to put down some, not using a wet palette just because uh, I don't want to change the consistency of these very much. And hopefully I'll get what I use this for done in the one go. A little bit of cyber brown. Cyber core brown is really rich. I want it to be a muted brown and cyber brown is actually very rich so I don't need very much of that. And I guess a wee bit of algae green. I'm going to have moss growing on her. I'm going to actually try and create that effect. So I want to kind of blend that in. So, you know, moss, that's too small to see, but you can still tell it's there. And then Garagax Sewer. And I'm just using a monster brush to get it on, but I'll switch out to Da Vinci 2 at some point, once I figure out how exactly this is gonna look. So first we're just going to put on straight Wildwood. It's been so long since I used Wildwood, I wanted to see what it looked like alone. And it's lovely, of course. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do for her armor yet. Oh my gosh, there's a skull in her neck. Yes, of course. Well, why wouldn't there be a skull in her neck, of course? Uh, I'm just gonna paint that. Okay, I already think I want to go something smaller than this. I'll get... Um, I'll get this part done, at least, with this brush. Do 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 do. cleaned it out thinking maybe I'll just switch over and then I was like, nah, I, uh, I want to cover before I worry about it drying on me. Do, do, do. It's been e Years? Feels like years since I painted a Sylvaneth. And it was Halloween. And I'm like, I want to do something fall. And she hasn't been painted yet. She's out of the Echoes of Doom, I think it was called. She's got a staff going all the way through there. I have to pick that out. But you can get her singly now. Because the Echoes of Doom thing is not available anymore. Alright, I think I'm going to add some of this algae green while it's wet right onto her. Give her more of a green look.
which literally could have been some other color, I'm sure, but this is what I'm going with. Algae, green, and wildwood. I'm not going to be doing it, um, since she's a tree. Mm sorts. I'm not going to be doing it. Yeah, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Give myself some more control. Since she's a tree, I don't need or want uniform color across her entire body. I want some different looks to her. Like right now, I'm adding in some um, Sewer, whatever the sewer is. What is what's this? Oh, Garagax sewer. I'm now adding in with the wildwood. And more algae green. I want it to be as biological as possible, which means not all the one color. This one. As mismatched as possible, like over here now. This one is going to be a lot more green because a lot more of the algae green is on her. I don't care at this point if I get more on her staff, her staff will be repainted. want to get that effect. That's looking nice. I think a little bit more green here. I just have to make my decision quickly because I don't want it to... can't wait for it to dry. Now her face. Ooh. Uh, see if I can manage to not get her eyes. I don't have to repaint her eyes. So I'm going to go down to my smallest brush that I'll be using, which is my Army Painter Kalinsky Masterclass. Put a little bit of this whole mix on there. Just to see if I can avoid getting her eyes. Uh, it's harder to do that with a liquid paint than a non-liquid paint. But this brush is really good at control, so maybe I can do it. Nice, bright. A little bit of green mixed in. Did a bit more of the algae green on her, the top of her leg. Because I figure there'll be a bit extra moss there. Checking out, um, checking for big pools. Don't want to have the pools taking away the details of the miniature. I don't know what you think about it so far, but I'm liking this aged wood. This aged wood, you know, aged but still alive wood color that I'm getting. I'm pleased. Need more algae green. Using a lot more of it than I thought I would. I guess because the other ones are so deep in color that they just take control. So, use the Garagax sewer over the skulls.
with contrast medium. So we've got a nice dark base to them. And contrast darkly, one hopes, with the dry brushed paint that I put over top of it. Only three skulls. Okay, now, bronze. I think I'll have to do their armor after we do a bit of her leaves so I can see what would contrast well against it. Poppy red. We've got dusk red to be that dark color. Um, we've got bright red to be the orangey red. got flash gets yellow which I think I'll just mix with contrast medium this is flash gets yellow air and contrast medium contrast medium and Magma Droth Flame. And Griffhound Orange. Ooh. Now, Boop. we are going to want Let's go mix you in. Mm -hmm. Tip, 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 tip. Let's try that the yellow just right here. And now Magma Droth Flame. And poppy red. Magma Roth flame. More Magma Roth flame. Yellow. Yeah, it's kind of the look I was going for. Okay, so let's do that again. The tip goes Flash gets yellow. The tip goes flash gets yellow. Flash gets yellow. Flash gets yellow. Flash gets yellow. Sure, flash gets yellow. Flash gets yellow. Flash gets yellow. Tip goes flash gets yellow. With that still on my brush, we do Magma Joss Flame. Magma Joss Flame. Magma Joss Flame. Magma Joss Flame, a little more Magma Droth Flame, Magma Droth Flame, Magma Droth Flame, and Magma Droth Flame. And then, with very little of that still on my brush, I do Poppy Red, Poppy Red, Poppy Red. Just don't want to have too much on the leaf. Poppy red. Poppy red. Poppy red. Poppy red. 
Bring a little bit more Madrona flame up. I think that'll work. Okay, at least that part is done for the moment. It's starting to come along. I have to decide on this, this part back here. This part back here, I'm thinking I'll do a darker red up to orange. Well, a darker red out to orange. Oh, my yellow has been contaminated with a red. It's fine. I, I like that. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, it's gone too far. Actually, kind of like that. That was, um, that's bright red <laughs> mixed with contrast medium mixed with uh, Flash Kids Yellow Air. And I'm just going to put it on because I want this to be a darker, a darker overall look. I just want to do it fast. I'm going to be doing wet blending. Don't mind if the skeletons get some on. <laughs> I'll worry about underneath after. Actually, the underneath will probably be much darker. Okay, so now we go on to the nice bright orange coming all the way down with Magma Droth Flame all the way down. I'll take off the excess all the way down. Well, maybe not all the way down This on this side. Um, a little bit more of this yellow around the edge. Kind of... Oops, didn't quite mean to get the skull that much. Sorry, Mr. Skull. Get that off your nose socket, Mr. Skull. All right, and then poppy red. Poppy red, boop, poppy red, poppy red. Poppy red, poppy red, poppy red, poppy red, poppy red. Poppy red. There we go. A little more poppy red where there's a dense area here and there. And, and now we have this dusk dusk red. For the super dark areas. Now let's take all that excess off, bringing it upward so that collects. Bring it upward. I think we want some more orange. So, yeah. More orange even towards the top. And underneath, I think I'll just go profound orange. It's all, it's all gonna be in shadow, so. 
it's not going to be very visible. And that'll look like look right in shadow. I guess we get a little bit of red in there. A little bit of poppy red underneath. Just in case someone was looking really closely. Okay, doki must must stop what I'm doing. I keep saying that, and then I keep fiddling with it, and I should not be fiddling with it. I keep fiddling with it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's done. Okay, I was going for darker anyway. Just let it be. Now we just want to uh, clean up. Now that it's dry, just clean up um, little areas. I think with uh, wild wood, have we got anything on that doesn't look right? So anything that we got a bit of too much red on? little parts of the vine we may have missed and as well we'd want to get just with the wildwood um like the underside of the branches so when she's standing gives a bit more of a shadow to the branches bit more contrast. Which is very straightforward to do with a tree. Just under her chin and her ear-ish thing. Um, so that's a bit darker under here as well. Oops. <laughs> Not that. Uh, as well as under here, where there should be a stark shadow because of um, her armor. Under there. Just to give her some more definition and contrast lower C. And then under. bottom of her thighs, under her knee, uh, her knee in this case, because it's pointed downward, all the areas that are basically pointing downward, just a wee bit extra of or that has something really close over top because that would create a shadow so like we'll do a shadow right here that's straight across uh, for her blade and her little fingers that are pointing down will be more darkened And then say her hand is over top of this one, so we're gonna give that a bit of a shadow where her hand was. Down over here. Right, now I've got Tesseract Glow. Put a little bit on my palette. I think this is an old Tesseract Glow, but it seems like it's mostly green now. Tesseract glow leaning towards striking scorpion. I'm sure it will be fine. Should I put yellow underneath? Mm. 
Go for the eyes. Nice glowing green. Scoot a little more away, I suppose. Green. Oh, no one's going to be able to see it, but it's all right. Do, 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 um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It does. It's kind of acting strangely because I guess because it's old. I probably could have got a new bottle, but it's fine. I'm just slobbering. Slobbering it on. Here we go. Slobber, slobber, slobber. Slobber, 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 slobber. Now she's glowing green. Do I want it to be more yellow? There we take off the parts that are not pointing toward glowing part. Now she's green. A bit of green. I'm gonna put a mix of, um, I guess, one to one ratio, sort of, of the Tesseract Glow to the Airbrush Flow Improver and uh, Retarder mix to, uh, to kind of act like a panel liner, hopefully, sort of thing, right here. I could just put it in there and it'll hopefully flow into the crevices without giving me issue. Probably should have put the metal on first, but hey, what can you do? I'm going to just have to go back and do it after. I just want to see where I need, want to put all of these green highlights. And now the tricky part of the center piece must study hands with and steady handing, studying one hand with the other hand. It's being studied by the table. That's the, oh, you can't see. I swear that's what I'm doing. Oh, it's hard. There's too many vines. Okay, steady. 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 There we go. I did it. Of course, there's one on the back. Okay. So, I have got True Copper here. Going with this copper. Give it a shot. Looks very pretty. How am I going to do this? Hmm, how am I going to do... I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... I'm just going to cover all. It's alright. If something comes out wrong, we'll sing a happy song, and you can sing along. Oh, 
Okay. So I put all of the, what was it again? True Copper Air Metallic on. And it looks out of place now, but I'm gonna hope that'll look better <laughs> when I go. Um, uh, and I've done the little leaves on that part anyway. And I put a uh, wraith bone uh, over this, the sections that it needed to go back to wraith bone. And now I think we're going to, we, we're going to mix some I used a bit more of the magma droth flame on the leaves and now we're just to help the a little blending of the colors now we're going to bring just flash gets yellow air with magma droth flame just to make a very yellow orange uh, to bring a little bit of an orangey yellow to these leaves but mildly so, so it's not pure yellow it's yellowy orange kind of here and there, not all of them, because it'd be more natural for only some of them to have it. But since, um, since we've got the Magmatroth yellow, uh, orange in there, with with a little bit of the flash gets yellow, makes a more natural transition. And I can just brush away anything that looks like it might be too much or just add back a little orange, but it'll dry a little bit darker than, what, than what's here. Do do. And then any that, you know, are covering up something shouldn't really have yellow because there's no light really going through them at all so they're going to be more orange and then you never want to put yellow where two uh two leaves are connected to each other because that would not make any sense since no light would have been well much less light would have been able to get through two leaves. And now some bright red. Ah, uh, poppy, poppy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Boom, 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 boom. Ba da 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 da. Or maybe less like blood, more like leaves. And I want something deep. Um, let's see what profound orange and and poppy red look like together. Profound orange, poppy red.
Hmm. Not quite what I'm going for. How about Shy Gore Brown? And Bright Red. Bright red. Boop. Boop. I think that's it. Just up here. Oh, I forgot you. You poor little spite, you. I forgot you. Let's put a lot of shadow where you are. Now we take Sigour Brown and we take Contrast Medium. Looks like two drops of Sigour Brown there. See how dark that is. Okay. And we make this metal old. Right, let's see that again in action. Make this metal oh. Go. And again. There we go. And again. All right. That's much more fitting. And I'll just let that dry before I fiddle with it anymore. All right. So I've removed her from her base now and I put Rakarth Flesh, well, actually a substitute for Rakarth Flesh, uh, which is a three to one mix of AK Interactive Reddish Grey and AK Interactive Basic Skin Tone. Three to one Reddish Grey to Basic Skin Tone makes Rakarth Flesh. And I put that on him and uh, then remove them off the base. And let's just have a look at her now with all of the metal uh, done for now. And I decided that I would also do her blade as the same metal. And then I added a uh, wraith bone uh, back to this little spite and uh, cleaned up any things that needed to go back to wraith bone uh, while I was doing that. 
so this is what she looks like currently and I haven't decided fully on the color of everything yet so I thought instead of going any further with her we're gonna get her base done um never mind the fact that his hand is still there it's fine um uh, we're going to get her base done and uh and go from there so uh I have a better idea of of all the of how, how all of the colors that are going to be on her actually work together but first off I'm just going to put some texture paint down and then put her back onto the base and put some grasses down and some mosses maybe a rock or two we'll see we'll see what's happening right now I just have um dark earth now this is dried out a little bit but I'm unconcerned so this is a little thicker texture than it normally is, <laughs> but it still works. It's gotten a bit old. I'm fine with it. I don't want to waste it. Yeah, that'll be enough. I can always rehydrate it like they do for those um, shoe polishes, right? They put a little penny in to re rehydrate it, or with um, what is it? Uh, brown sugar. Put a damp paper towel in to rehydrate it. That works lovely. Probably too much, but let's just get it all on there and go from there. Do to do so. Just making it, you know, more like ground rather than peanut butter. And I'm going to paint the edge of the base to match, so that'll be fine. Now, we're going to put her back into place. Okay, not quite in place. Sinking her feet down into it. Sinking him down into it. <laughs> it's like he's eating ground now. Let me just uh, move that out of the way. Yeah, that's kind of what I want. Just gonna put him so he's barely visible now. Just sinking into the ground. Instead of painting the ground, I'm just gonna be using the ground texture where he is. She is, uh, I have to make the ground look like it's, you know, soft enough for him to just be pushed into it. That should be pretty straightforward. Or, you know, I could make it look like she just cut him in two. Maybe I'll do that. Somehow missing the back end of him. But if I make it like really wet, I guess around where he is. We can make him look like he's just going right down into the ground. He's a sludgy character. It can happen. Alright. And now she's down there. He's down there. Put a little bit of this, just a tad bit of it, on her foot. And I think we're going to make a bit of a footprint. Just a little bit of one. And now we're going to see about adding some autumn. Autumn, 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 autumn. Um, got these big fluffy tufts from Gamer's Grass. And we are going to 
find one that doesn't look particularly round. That one doesn't look particularly round. Let's see what might be too green. We can always change that though. Let's see what that looks like anyway. Stuff it in there. Stuff it into the texture. I don't mind if it looks stuffed. I'm not being particularly gentle with it because it's old grass that's dying out because it's autumn. Yeah, I think that suits. And get another one um, over here. I'm going to stuff it in there. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Stuff it in to this. We normally have to stuff it as much, but. You know, since it's dry, since the ground texture is drier, and I want it to look rather haggard. Don't do this if you don't want your grass to look haggard, but I do. First, we're going to add some of this darker color, just to give a little bit of different color. Um, if you can see that. <laughs> That'll be enough. And stuff, 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 stuff. More gently. Right, doesn't look quite quite right yet, but that is fine. We will fix that. But first, let's add the secondary leaves. The oh so expensive maple leaves. I will hopefully not lose. Don't do this. Don't do this while it's windy. Don't do it while it's windy. How cute. Eh, it's gonna be hard to pick up, isn't it? Probably should have gotten. Uh, where to go? Probably should have gotten a uh, better pair of tweezers for this. It's fine. Put that down. Put that down. Little cute little twigs on them. Now we have to actually get them to stay there. And at the same time alter the color a little bit. You just make some regular glue wood glue uh, in with water and make something that will stick perfectly but I'm just going to use this anti uh, shine matte varnish and Crippound orange okay The leaves actually stain the ground. 
that they're on, so I am not concerned about these staining. Mm, I won't do all of them though. And I think that's good for that color. Now I think I want to do a bit of red. Poppy red. If it happens to look like blood on the ground, that just works. Garagax sewer. With the anti shine matte varnish. To bring down the color of this ground, which has really lightened up a bit, unless I'm imagining it. But I'm still going to leave some of this grayish part somewhere. Bottom of the base is now bothering me, so I'm just going to clean up that base. I should wait. I really should. There's no need to put it black yet, but I want to see what it looks like black. And I am impatient enough to not wait. This is just play, um, AK Interactive black. Okay, gotta wait for it to dry. Got to wait for it to dry. I'm gonna try a pastel indigo on that sprite using my number two da Vinci. And see what I think. Oh, I was not supposed to pick it up by the base. I've gone ahead of myself. Just the slightest touch of Telesar Blue. To the pastel indigo. Makes such a vibrant color. Just like that. Do I want them? Yeah. Just bring a little bit of extra color. Not too much detail on them. Like they're a little, you know, spirit colored. Nothing in particular picked out or anything like that. The color of your gemstones now. How about... How about... Lizard Folk Scion. With pastel indigo. And like a one-to-one -one ratio, um, and well, let's see what that looks like anyway. Just a hint. Tell us our blue. A little bit of something green. Way watch for green. This is an old bottle of it. So I 
like a one-to-one -one <laughs> ratio of Wee Watcher Green and the mix that I just made. Let's see what that looks like. Um, a little more blue. Um, hold on. Let me just grab that X. Is that right? So starting from the top and then going down and leaving a droplet of it down. That's what I planned to do, but this one just pushed itself off of it. I don't want you. There. Not that it matters a lot because that can just look like aged bronze. Once you bunched up at the bottom, and you same way, only a little bit at the top, bunched up at the bottom, only a little bit at the top, bunched up at the bottom. And then down here, bunched up at the bottom. Well, pull off that excess. Pull off the excess around the edges. So I'll put something glossy over it to make it look like it is a gemstone, but I don't actually want it to be incredibly vibrant because I don't want it sticking out. Ah, but do I want it on here? Is the question, or do I want that to be something different? Oh my goodness, the decisions. How about I use this mix and with pressure contrast medium. All right, so one to one ratio of contrast medium with this. Make it, well, no, like a three to one ratio of contrast medium to that to make it very thin to go over here. So it's blue. Mildly blue. Let's put on a bit more. And I'll take that out in a moment. I just have to get down this side too. Alright, so now I'll extract what was in the leaves keep that green, if I indeed want the green, I would decide to use it. And add a little bit of blue to the bottom. Or do I want a blue? I don't know. Like, like that. Or do I want this not to be green and I want a blue? Hmm. Kind of like that as well. What am I going to do with Oh, there's a purple tone. Okay, I have this purple tone. And I think that's what I'm going to add to these, these little ch 
charms. A little bit of purple to the strings. Um, maybe it should be twine, really. I guess I could make it twine, but I don't know. I kind of want to add the purple. So that's what I'm doing. Might make it look like it's made out of skin. But adding it anyway. You can always do a second layer then as well. I think that's what I'll do. A second layer once the first layer dries. I was purple toned by the army painter. Just didn't want it to stick out too much, but you know, be wanted it to be different. Gotta let it dry. I keep saying I have to let it dry, and then I don't let it dry. But this time, this time I'm going to let it dry, unless I want to work on him a bit. Oh, um, he needs to have a wash put all over him, so I might as well do that now. It's going to look something like this creepy little fella. Yeah, Abrax or Shade will put all over him so he can dry. Abrax or Shade by Citadel is wash. He's going all over this fellow. Not too deep, darkly, but. Just so he's got a bit of shadow. And his face is shadowed. And then we'll leave him to dry. Now the next little bit has to be done through the airbrush. So I took Tesseract Glow and very gently applied it to her belly so that any of the white that I'd missed because I couldn't get it with a paintbrush I just applied over with Tesseract Glow and that's Tesseract Glow straight into the pot. I did not bother to thin it down. This is just Tesseract Glow. It works perfectly through an airbrush. And yes, I was so busy worrying about my painting that I did not put a lid on my airbrush, it's fine. And then I took Agrax Earthshade and a drop of Griffound Orange into the Agrax Earthshade, so like 10 to 1 Agrax Earthshade to Griffound Orange, and then another 10 of an Aki Interactive Airbrush Thinner, so I could kind of bring all of the colors together with this wash through the airbrush, and just so I'm doing it nice and evenly, I'm putting this on through the airbrush. It's easier to get with an airbrush than with your brush. So I'm applying it quite heavily for an airbrush, but since this is a shade, I'm quite content with how I'm doing that. I'm bringing down the colors of the plants as if they had been on there for a long time. And then I'm finishing up the look with a mix of thinner and Sigor Brown. And then I'm applying it in various places, bringing down the light colored areas to a nice dark brown that will hopefully when it's all dry will look like I intended to which is autumn you know mud and leaves that have been there for a while and have been stamped into the ground and aged grass I think it'll work out well but there's only one way to find out because this is all experimentation at this point really trying out these new materials but after I let it dry, I'm going to pick out some of the plants on the ground with Magma Droth Flame and Poppy Red, just like I'd done for the leaves themselves on her branches. All right, so here it is all dry. Like I said, I um, added here and there, not all of them, but I added back the Magma Droth Orange and the Red to some of the scattered leaves on the ground just to make them more match what she already has on her. 
a wee bit. Now he's gotten a bit dark because of all the spraying that has been going on him, but that's all right. We'll lighten him up again. Three to one reddish gray to basic skin tone from AK Interactive, and it should go over smoothly. I am going to, let's see, it's consistency. Yeah, this consistency works good for what I wanted to do. Can you see all right? Good. And just gonna pick him out. Pick him out again. He's got a bit covered. But, you know, I think I'm just gonna leave his. Just gonna pick out all the highlighted areas, I think. Skin. Right. Picked out again. And now we'll do his pustules, which are done with decomposed flesh, which makes sense because it's a slightly browner color. Now pick out those pustules. It's just what I always wanted to do. Pick out pustules. Hmm, how about, uh, it's surprising he doesn't have a lot of pustules. I guess so you can't see them because he's so deep in the ground. Let's do like a whole lot of pustules right here. In there. And, oh, looks like there's a pustule right here and right here and I guess even if he doesn't have pustules we'll just make pustules look like they're on him so that we're grossed out a little bit even more by his horrible -ness. a little bit of concern for the lady of vines on whether she's going to get nurgled I guess around his wound, he's got a big, he's got a big indent where I think a toe, a lady of vine toe, squished him. So we'll, we'll put a little bit of indentation there and how about we put it on his teeth too. I'm not going to leave his teeth that clean, but just to pick it out, looks like he's got something in there that I guess could be a tongue, but we're going to make that light too. And I guess I'll also, oh, he's got a tiny couple little pustules on his face, which are absolutely revolting. And we'll do his I as well. <laughs> Alright. Picked him out a bit now. Green fluorescent from um, the premium line of Vallejos at 62039. Nope. And then glaze medium. <laughs> swirly, 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 and apply over everything that I made a lighter color. Um, this one back there. Well, except for the the wound, the big gaping wound. Let's chew. Oop, too much. And maybe a little bit more here. It didn't quite come out green enough. There we go. 
Oh my goodness. Oops, that's better. All right. Okie dokie. So that was pastels, dark oath flesh with a bit of that glaze medium. Just to make it a little thinner. And to his horn. And I, this little wound that he just got. Get more pinky. And I guess around his face a little bit. And his ear. Just a little bit here and there to give it, give that Rackarth flesh that I added back um, a little bit of shadowing. We're going to go with Cyber Brown and Dusk Red, one to one ratio. See what color that comes out to be because I'm really experimenting here. All right, all you guys get out of the way. Shoo, 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 This is a mad scientist place. Literally, because I'm a scientist. Um, what color do we got? We mix this together. That's way too dark. Okay. So one to one ratio of that. And then we had, um, dark old flesh. So let's go add in dark oath flesh. What do we got now? You know, that color will work. And I don't think we wanted any less filled than that. So it's like a two to one ratio of dark oath flesh with one Psycor brown, one dusk red. And that on, not this brush, but my smallest brush, the Kalinsky Masterclass, is going to be the darkest part of these, of these fungi. Or this fungus, I suppose. I'm just going to make a ring in the middle. So we see, still see the top and we still see the bottom just doing a ring and these bottom ones you can't really do a ring where you see the top very well. But the ring is the important part to make it look right. So a ring And a ring and a ring. Um, I guess the most important part is to make sure that the outer parts are still showing that pale wraithbone color and you can always put wraithbone back over the edge which probably would be the easiest thing to do but there we go see they're looking better already all right so we leave that to dry let's see how mr doing mr down here is doing whether he's mostly dry checking out his pustules yeah basically dry so we can work on him again now light flesh on the postural tips and the teeth. Light flesh I have here, which is a pale cream. A little tiny little bit of pink on it for making interactive. I think I'll also, whoopsies, went out really quickly. All right, I think I'm also going to um, do his eyeball with that too. 
and if it's drying too quickly on your brush, just use a bit of AK's, not AK, um, retarder from, from Vallejo so that you get more time picking out these details. So there we go, just the top of his eyeball. So you can sit, really see that eyeball. Pick out his surprisingly clean looking teeth. Oh my gosh, lovely. Just lovely. Love this wonderful guy. He's just getting grosser and grosser. Pustules picked out. Glaze medium and purple tone. Boop. <laughs> Do do do. Guess I could make that a little more purple while I have the purple tone. If you recall, that is what I used on the first coat. So let's just make it a darker purple, shall we? While I've got it here. Do 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 do. Right, another layer of that. I wonder what you would look like. No, don't get distracted. Gotta work on this. Um, around the big hole he's got. And I guess around, I think around his eye. Feels like his eye would be irritated. And around his mouth. A little bit. Maybe in his mouth. Yeah. It reminds one of bruises. So I guess around her. Oh, there we go. Around the first, around the edges of the first pustule. Around the edges of the pustule. around this mass of pustules on his back, which I definitely love to look at. Around the pustule, down there, and down there, and there. Okay. We watch your green glaze on all the pustules. Out of curiosity, let's just see what it looks like over you. And over you. Over you. Over you. Maybe it was too green. I will decide. I definitely need to fix that. Over your eye. Over your eye. All right, uh, now, pustule. Over this pustule, and this pustule, and this pustule, and this pustule, and that pustule. And all of these pustules. And over your face pustules. And your tongue pustule. Okay. I'll take a little bit away. All right. Here we go. Griffon orange with dark tone, uh, not dark, a dark old flesh, and an even mix. 
So one to one. And then we're going to put it over here. And that is more orange than I kind of was hoping for, but that's okay. We're going to add skeleton hoard. Alright, so just straight skeleton hoard onto my brush and mix it there. Skeleton hoard on my brush and mix it right onto those two other colors. So I get the color that I'm looking for, which is a more orange, uh, more yellowy. It's kind of what I was going for. Maybe a slightly more yellow than that. No. We can always add yellow after. Okay, just more skeleton hoard. Once more. All right, yeah, that's what I'm going for. We'll see for sure when it's dry, but I think that's what I'm going for. Here I have a two to one ratio of light flesh because it's a bit pinky with pastel indigo there and I just applied it to this little fellow um, and then I took a little bit of the talisar blue just to make a bright brighter blue but still very thin mid-tone color to this fellow a little bit. Oops, I don't know whether you saw that at all. Um, and use more of this two to one ratio of pastel indigo to light flesh. Just down his spine. And on the little tip of his hands or whatever these may be do we get closer to the tips because I want them to be brighter on his spine and then a little bit on his wings just because it wasn't quite working out the way I wanted so oh I keep I keep putting that branch in the way don't I for you anyway. Just to make it a little bit more flowy, I do like how that one worked out, but that one not as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of it on my brush because it's so potent. It's a really beautiful color, that one. And then combining it in to make a vibrant blue that is still quite fluid for the very tips. Of his wings, maybe a little bit brighter right about here. But yeah, not much. I don't want to spend too much time on those fellas. Right, so he's now down in the ground. Now it's time to put on black from AK Interactive with some glaze medium, like a one-to-one -one ratio, just so it's a fluid black. I could use any, any fluid black really, because just gonna have one single dash. One single dash. Well, a slit, if I actually do this right. And one single slit across, just 
line that makes him look like he's got an eye. There he is. Can you see it? There he is. One part glaze medium. And one part blood for the blood god. Blood for the blood god is incredibly glossy. Just beautiful for blood effects. And the gla glaze medium is going to make it flow a lot easier on the miniature and also thin it down a little bit so it's more transparent. That's maybe a little bit more glaze medium. That seems like a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, let's try it, you know, in his mouth first. Seems like the spot. Try it first. Looks good. Now we're going to put it right into his deep wound. Just fill that deep wound up with it. There it is. And around his eye. Like he's kind of bleeding, which kind of makes sense at the moment because of what she's doing to him. Maybe uh, some blood around everywhere that she is piercing her. I think we'll go full on blood for the blood god. Just around that the deepest parts of her foot. We're not gonna not go any gore, were you? Oh my gosh. Guess we'll put a little bit of thin bits of blood on his teeth. Oh my goodness. Um, um I don't know. Maybe some uh, blood over here, like he's just been completely beaten into the ground back here so people can just guess if he still has the rest of his body or not just up just in various places to make it you know as wonderfully horrifying as possible here up she's here up she's you know pretty nice looking and then you can look down and what she's doing without even caring to this guy and you're like oh I'm okay. not someone to mess with Should she have it feels like it'd be too far if she had blood on her it's not corn he's gonna be the one covered in blood she doesn't leave blood on her weapons. I'm happy with how he looks. Oh, and I also did um, Psycor Brown um, all over his, uh, all over the vines that are keeping him down. So it was just dark vines to really contrast against his, uh, his paler skin. Gloss varnish, more than meets the eye. Gloss varnish. Hmm. I still haven't decided where I want, <laughs> whether I want this to be more green or more blue or whether I should stop fooling around with it and it looks fine. But what I'm thinking right now is actually <laughs> um, Tyrion blue with gloss varnish over this. So so let me just keep fooling around with it for no good reason. So we got some glass varnish and Tyrion blue. So let's 
so that we can make this glossy and also bring it back into the blue like that going from top and then leaving a bulb of it there. Just gotta make certain I definitely well I can always do another layer of gloss varnish. I could. Okay. And now we're gonna do these little things, these little charms. I think we're just gonna do it with the true copper. Just little golden charms. Straightforward. I'll probably put some dark oath. So not the same dark color that I did for um, her armor because I don't want it to look like it's the same metal. So we'll put some true copper air from the army painter on these little, little charms. Make something this just simple, simple little charms. I don't know who was close enough to her for her to accept these charms from them, but I, I don't know, some Karnath, a Lumineth perhaps, that they, she got to know very well. That to try for now. And now, with this true copper, nice fresh dose of it, which is why I'm going to just do some edge highlighting here and there, not too much, of her armor. I actually chose to do Griff Hound Orange mixed in with the True Copper because the True Copter was a bit too uh, golden for uh, to make a good highlight for this new metal. So it was a one to one ratio of Griff Hound Orange and True Copper on my palette to make this new orangey copper. Which better matches? Which better matches as a highlight? For this metal so I did that and then of course if I ever if I did too much if I went a bit too extreme with the highlight I can always go back with um, a thin down contrast paint and uh, Zygor Brown mix to bring to bring down the color again if I think it's needed. I think I think that works all right. I may have done too much on this. But I'll, you know, that's really highlighted. And I'll end this little bit. We'll see. But I don't think I need to do any more colors besides that. Just brought it up a little bit in color. Here and there. Here and there. Not exactly out there. Nothing big. Just bring it up a little bit. I don't know whether I I don't, I, I see a difference. I don't know whether you see a difference <laughs> in my changes. Maybe it's so minute a difference. You can't even tell, but I'm happy with it. But I did another layer of the black 
um, around the rim again. And nearly done. Oh, right. And uh, I did the I did a dark oath uh, over top these little little charms. So that brings that down a bit in color. And then I think for that little gemstone on that last one, we're just going to do Blood for the Blood God. And Talisar Blue to make a purple. Mostly just because I kind of wanted to see what it would look like. Talisar Blue. Blood for the Blood God. Makes a uh, more of a black, purple black, really. Not exactly good for a gemstone. <laughs> now I know. But I'm putting it on the gemstone anyway. Not given to her from a Lumineth, given to her from a Dollars of Cain. It works. I might change it, but I'm not worried about it right now. She is amazing. Nearly all done. Um, I'm gonna take some more of the dark oath and and just put a little more brown on this fellow's horns. Dark oath flesh. More brown on his horns. Oh my, have we basically reached the end? All right, one, oh, I, I, I was definitely contemplating making her tree parts more mossy. I don't know whether I want to do that. I mean, I kind of like her as she is, but let's just, let's just see what it's like. A pair of tweezers with this tiny grass green. You know what? Let's just, let's just see how bizarre that would look if I use this on her. It's definitely too tall. Get her. Thinking of making You know, a mossy effect feel on her. But I don't know if this feels like it might be too tall. I'm just kind of playing around with it. It'll work for a tree. Kind of feels bizarre putting hair on her legs. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll work for a tree. I ended up just taking it off and putting it on the ground around to add a bit more green back. I really feel like there should be a lot of wet under him. So, so we're going to do gloss varnish. Boop, 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 boom. And... Yeah, blood for the blood card blood for the blood god but not very much so we've got big old three drops of um 
glass varnish and then just a scoopful of blood for the blood guard to make this tinted red appearance. Clean out my brush because I definitely don't want all of that blood for the blood guard or varnish it's getting stuck in my brush. And yeah, we'll go up in size. So we can add all of this glossy area to here so it looks like there's possibility that he could have been pushed down into the ground because it's you know wet ground and it's looking very you know pink me right now but it'll dry clear with just a tint possibly not even visible just a tint of the blood for the blood graph and I think we'll do another little dousing of all of that where we have the red already on them and then definitely more of this all around Ooh, you're not just, i'm not showing you uh all around his teeth so his teeth are nice and red and make his little his little horns glossy and also add a little bit more gloss to each of his pustules. So they are incredibly unnerving. And the pustule in his mouth. And there. And then, yeah, here and there, we'll also add more gloss so it looks like the ground is more wet so it makes sense that he is stuck in the ground because it's you know muddy and very very much pliable enough for her to stick someone into the ground with it And right now, lastly, but not least, you back here. Let me just see if I want with some ball red, which is a very vibrant red, but still transparent. If I want to bring up some of the red here so that the leaves are less more red just where it got really dark oh right and the skeletons I never forgot about you all right leave that and now the gonna grab the decomposed flesh decomposed flesh for these skulls but it's not gonna be just plain decomposed flesh we're gonna bring them down because decomposed flesh is seriously lighter than what they currently are we're going to bring them down with and what was on them was um uh garagax sewer and also there was red on them, so we're going to bring them down with do 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 Garrick Sewer and Ball Red. Because Ball Red just has a lot of red in it. Okay, so I guess that's a, you know, 
two to one ratio. Uh, I'm not certain what I just did there. Um, I made what looks a lot like that brown. And we're just going to be very careful, not fill any of the holes, just bring it up a little bit, not even going all the way to the end, just bringing up some raised surfaces with this color on all of the skulls, being careful not to overwhelm their sockets anywhere, I want that, those sockets to stay the color that they are. All right, the skull's there. Didn't forget Mr. Skull in here. Skull in her neck. And where is it? And the little skull hiding here in her side. I don't think there's any more skulls. All right, and then going to add to that mix. Now that mix is now going to add, be added with more of the decomposed flesh. Just on top of where we said that, but closer to the raised areas. Kind of in a wet blending because the areas did not particularly dry first. Just dabbing it. This one I think we'll leave there because there's not going to be a lot of light getting to it. And we're going up a little bit more in color. Okay. More towards dark. Um, Decomposed flesh. Grabbing more of the highlighted, the raised surfaces. I think that's as far as we'll go with that one. And then more of the raised surfaces. Just trying to make it look like a skull. Now we're just going to grab decomposed flesh alone with whatever was left on our brush and really over cheekbones, across the nose, and most importantly the brow. That one's really exposed, so. You know, whatever make it looks like a natural skull in there. I guess we'll put a little bit on his nose there, thing that's sticking out the most. And, you know, just a little bit here. Going across so that if you have a glance, you can see that it's actually a skull and I think that's where we're gonna stop. I mean I could do more but I don't want to. <laughs> I could do um, highlighting all of the, the tree area but I kind of did that when I was doing it in the first place so I'm pretty content. I'll play with her around. I may play with her later, but I'm happy with her as she is right now. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you did. You're going to be getting more painting videos 
out. I have uh, a lot of things to paint. I'm going to get more painting videos out. I'm going to get more painting review videos out. I always say that, but this is happening. Uh, there's just so much I want to do. So uh, if you want to help the channel even further, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. You can figure out how to do that either in the description below or um, just in my about section on the YouTube channel. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you very much to the patrons and the YouTube members. As always, you have allowed me to spend hours editing this video because I took hours at this model and I really appreciate your support both financially and morally. So thanks for being you. I just want to show you some more shots of her. I mean, not everything turned out exactly how I was imagining it, but I, I really came into this experimenting wholly and I'm happy with her. I could spend more hours on her, I'm sure, but I am happy to put her on the battlefield. So, yay!